The title of our sharing is Gratitude, a Noble Fruit of Trust. Today and tomorrow, and I think even today, many um, families already gathered to celebrate Thanksgiving. And uh, it's a beautiful, well-known American holiday. We don't have it, of course, in Poland, but uh, personally, I, I like it very much. And um, I always wanted to get to its essence, to see, um, to find out the deepest significance of this holiday. And uh, I have to say, it's overflowing it's in its meaning. It is abundant. And I know there is no need for me to, uh, to explain to you the history. You know it very well, its origin. But tonight, uh, we will try to learn more what is the gratitude, what uh, thanksgiving means in, in its essence, to get to its heart as much as we can, of course. And uh, tonight we are in front of the Lord in the Eucharist to give him thanks for his blessings, his grace, his presence, um, for all the graces uh, he endows on us unceasingly every day. We know that the Eucharist, uh, this word means thanksgiving to give thanks. So when we come in front of the Lord here, when we come to, the, to participate in the Eucharist, first we need to, before we start asking for graces, um, it's good to think what I want to thank him for. What I want to thank him for. So, it's very important to have to learn the attitude of gratitude. And I don't say, like, if I feel I want to give thanks to the Lord, if I am uh, in good mood to thank him for something, I said the attitude, to learn the attitude of gratitude. Attitude is something stable is my will it's my decision mm. it's my awareness of the graces that God bestows on me Psalm 105 says recall the wondrous deeds the Lord has done Recall the wondrous deeds the Lord has done. Let us recall. We need to remember them. We need to recall them. The graces, to remember that we are enormously gifted people. And we cannot get sick with dementia. And sometimes if we... Um, if we don't have good memory, then it's what Sister Gaudia said in the announcements. It's very important to write down the graces we, we received. Even to have like a, like a book note, you know, like a something or sheet of paper of uh, a notebook that where I can write down the graces God gives me. Because we know why, why to write them, write them down, to remember them, to recall them, to have something I, I can go back and remind myself, okay, God was so much present in my life that time. It's normal that we have our ups and downs, we have our time of desolation and consolation, uh, 
And sometimes it's very hard to give thanks to the Lord. Sometimes we have to think, do I have something uh, I want to give thanks? I'm really grateful to God. It's so now I'm going through such hard, uh, tough time. I don't feel even like a spark of gratitude is uh, in my heart. I remember um, once, it was a few years ago, my English teacher, it was in Poland, shared with me about her examination of conscience. And I really, I found it beautiful. She said, she's a very knowledgeable, but also wise and creative person. And once, uh, yeah, she shared that every evening, she's trying to recall and to thank God for all these situations that she overlooked, that she didn't, during the day, that she didn't recognize the presence of God. Because certain things we can see very easily. Jesus, thank you for this, thank you for that. But she said she takes a few moments every evening to go through the day and to see where God was hidden. What gifts she, she has received during the day and she didn't notice them, she didn't recognize them. She didn't recognize God's presence in these gifts. So it's, it's very important. And so one thing is to, to make a decision to strive for an attitude of gratitude, not for a feeling, an emotion of gratitude, because as we said, it's not important, it's not possible to be in good mood, to have good positive emotions all the time, but uh, to, to be grateful. It's my decision, it's my will. I want to be aware, I want to see God's presence in my life. And the next step is about my relationship with God. My relationship with God as my Father. This is a very crucial meditation um, because everything depends on it. Who is God for me? This is the question. Who is God for me? If we haven't answered this question so far. Talking, there is no point talking about gratitude in our lives. Who is God for me? From everything depends on our answer to this question. Is he my father who loves me, who cares for me, who guides me or not? Do I meet with him? Do I talk to him? Do I want to spend time with him? How, what do I feel when I am before him? How do I feel? What's in my heart? Not, not so much what's on my lips, but what's in my heart? Is he my father, loving father, always present to me? Or it's maybe better to be cautious about him, to stay and to meet him like in a distance. Is he a person or an idea? If God is my Father, there is no need to encourage ourselves to be grateful. If God is my Father, no need to encourage ourselves to be grateful. But I would even say, if our image of God 
is incorrect, is broken, is untrue, and very often it's like this. Gratitude can heal it. The attitude of gratitude can heal it. Is it easy? I don't know. But we are working. This is like the surgery on an open heart. What's there? And first, let's start with simple thing. You know, the, our lesson of how to learn gratitude. Simple thing. Not even what I received, but who I am. That's the first question, who I am. The question, it's not a question, who am I? It's not this question, but the statement, who I truly am. Sister Faustina was also looking for the answer to this question. She wrote, I penetrated the whole world and I found no other love like the love of my heart. Therefore, I looked into the world of eternity. My heart has desired the love of the immortal one. My heart has sensed that I am a royal child. I see that the heavenly palace is my home. Do we see what, do we sense what, what she's talking about? Let's try like a very simple exercise in the morning, right after we uh, wake up to imagine I am a royal child. And it's not a wishful thinking. It's true. I am a royal child. Preparing this meditation, I recalled one of the homilies given in my uh, parish church in my hometown by our pastor. And he gave us an example of a queen and a handmaid. And it happened that the queen slapped her, you know, the handmaid on the handmaid on her face. And the girl asked, why did you do it? You are, my, you are my handmaid, but I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Be aware who I am, who we are. We have unimaginable dignity. The dignity of being children of God, the dignity that no human being is able to confirm. A person, a human being can tell us about this dignity, but I would say it will be only like an intellectual knowledge. We need to hear it in the depths of our hearts about the dignity we have as children of God. And at the same time, no human being or even a devil is able to damage it, this dignity in us. Nothing, only the one, only the one who is dwelling in me can reveal this truth to me, can confirm my value and my dignity. Only the one God who is dwelling in me can reveal it to me, this truth. Nothing from outside can do it. No social status, no degrees, money, travels, beautiful appearance, nothing. 
we need to get to this wellspring gushing forth in the depths of our hearts. We need to get to the love with capital L, to the love, the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit present in our hearts. We need to get to the place where we are totally, unconditionally loved. And from this place, we have to look at ourselves and then consider other people and the world. So it seems that the most important pilgrimage, pilgrimage of our lives is not somewhere outside, going somewhere outside. The most important pilgrimage of our lives is to the inside. It's directed to, to inside. The greatest gift we have ever been given is here. We are the holy temples, the shrines where God dwells. So this is the first reason why we should be ever grateful for who we are. Everything else flows from this truth. The love dwells in me. The blessed Trinity made me their dwelling place, and I am the child of the Trion God for whom he cares and leads me to my final destination, everlasting communion with him in heaven. He has the plan. He knows what way we should go, how to guide me. And from this perspective, I should perceive my everyday life. He knows the way, he knows our destination, he knows how and what way to guide me. My loving father is in charge, he's in control, he's the captain of this tour. But sometimes what, what do we do? We think we are in charge, we need to instruct him. This is what's in our, we need to do every and any possible thing to carry out our own plan because we think this is the only uh, one plan that's going to work. So maybe that's why we have so many detours in our lives. When we look at our lives from this perspective, we th then we see that everything is a gift given by the loving hand, hand of our Father, everything. So there will be graces we really and truly enjoy, um, and there will be tough graces, difficult, challenging. So once it came to me that sometimes when, um, when I think I know better, then I'm acting like a three-year-old child trying to instruct my teacher about the educational system, trying to instruct my teacher or my parents how they should uh, bring me up. It's funny, isn't it? Like three-year-old child would like to be in charge and like to instruct, you know, uh, his teacher. But at the same time, it's consoling because we need to be like children. And when we look at them, you know, like little children given by Jesus as examples, they don't think they are in charge. They don't behave in this way. They don't track their parents, check what they do, how they guide them. Their attitude is self-surrender, complete self-surrender because they feel they are loved. Maybe they control when they don't feel they are loved. But they, when they feel they are safe, everything is fine, just guide me.
Jesus said to Saint Faustina, do not examine with curiosity the road down which I lead you. Never trust in yourself, but abandon yourself totally to my will. And she replied, I want to live in the spirit of faith. I accept everything that comes my way as given me by the loving will of God, who sincerely desires my happiness. And so I will accept with submission and gratitude everything that God sends me. I will pay no attention to the voice of nature and to the promptings of self-love. So when we look at reality from this perspective, then everything looks differently. Our God is God of love, and love in its nature needs to be manifested. God, who is love, manifests himself every day. Are we, are we able to see it? Don't await great things to happen. Just, for example, sunrise. Or it might be too early. <laughs> or a sunset. Or the colors of the fall. All people around me. Simple things. A priest during our retreat shared with us a beautiful testimony about a person's sensitivity to God's presence. Um, he was invited to visit a sick person. He said, when I saw this person, I couldn't figure out if it was a man or a woman because the face was so terribly disfigured. It was a woman and she shared with him because he was confined, because she was confined to bed, her family during the spring and summertime uh, took her to the orchard and put her bed under the tree. And she said, Father, when I look at this tree, I see that there are not even two leaves that look alike. Every leaf is different. This priest said, when I heard it, I asked myself a question. Who is the healthy one here? Sister Faustner wrote, you have surrounded me, you have surrounded my life with your tender and loving care more than I can comprehend, for I will understand your goodness in its entirety only when the veil is lifted. I desire that my whole life be but one act of thanksgiving to you, O God. Sensitivity to God's gifts. One thing is to see them, to see the actual gift. The other, more important, is to see the giver. Who is behind the gift I received? We know that sometimes certain things are very valuable. They have great value to us. Not because they have value, themselves, but because of the person who gave them. Because this person is very dear to us, so the gifts, the physical things are very important to us because of the giver. So when God is my loving Father who cares for me and I am his beloved child, daughter, son, then I'm looking at my life from my interior home where he dwells and where I am with him. 
Yes, where I am with him. I would say when I when we find this interior home where we can stay with him, then we are able to accept even the most difficult graces. When we find him in us, the mo- even the most difficult graces, we can accept, not only accept, but to see the loving hand of the Father who is giving them to us. Gratitude is the fruit of faith, hope, trust, and love. And it's a very noble virtue, not self-centered, but perceiving the reality from God's perspective, not with resignation, when difficult graces come, but with self-surrender and trust that this is the stage of my life that we have to go through. We means my father and I. I'm never alone. When we visit our Lord, even every so often in his home within us, we come to believe that everything that happens in our lives is good. And even in life challenges us, God can turn all the challenges and everything, even what we've done wrong, bad things, into good. His love has such power to turn even bad things into good. Everything is his will or he allows certain things to happen. We are immersed in his love. So that's why we need to pray constantly that God would cleanse our hearts and restore the sight to our eyes so that we could see the truth of our reality. I would like to encourage you to practice a very beautiful prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving before we start asking for something. We don't have to be in good mood. We don't have to feel that now I want to uh, praise you, Lord. Someone said, even through tears and with wooden lips, to praise the Lord as the act of love and act of trust. I want to share with you, because I was very, I, when I read about it, that we should, we should praise the Lord, doesn't matter, in every situation, doesn't matter what we are going through. <clears throat> so Jesus put me into a test. I didn't know about it. I had a meeting and very important appointment. It was in Poland, in another city, and it was like three hours away from by bus. I had to uh, transfer the bus twice on the way, first to get to the main station and then to that city and then take the tram. So that was a dream. it was in winter. I left home very, uh, you know, early, early enough to have enough time to be on time. And the whole plan failed on the first bus stop. The bus didn't come. So you can imagine my blood pressure was going up. I was very upset with all the drivers in that city. Because really, I wanted to be to come on to yeah to come on time, and uh, I made you know great effort to to make it, but it failed the first bus stop. So my mood really was terrible. It's better not to describe it. 
But in the midst of it, I heard, <clears throat> I heard in my heart the words, praise me. I knew definitely it wasn't from me. I knew it was from him. I didn't expect it that time. You know, exactly on this bus stop <clears throat> in winter after almost 40 minutes of waiting for the bus. So I recognized it was him, and I said, Lord, in such a mood, I can't. I can't do that. I, no, I'm not in, in a good mood to praise you. But I started, you know, with wooden lips. I started to, to praise him. Very simple, very simple, without any positive emotions. I said, I trust you, Jesus. I know you are here and you are in this situation. You are in control, you are in charge. I surrender to you all this situation. Amen. The bus came. But it was already too late to get the other bus, the second one. So when I came to the main station in that city, I saw, you know, the bus was gone. And out of the sudden, I heard an announcement. There is another bus. I didn't know about it ahead of time, going to that city in five minutes. I said, wow, it seems like a rescue. But the next question was, I needed to get off in the middle, in the center of the city. But certain buses, they were going, taking, you know, like a, a belt way to the, you know, like to avoid the city center and to get to the station. So I thought about it. That's why I went to the driver and I asked the question, are you going through the city center? No. Okay, so it's not going to help me. I turned back and after a few seconds, I could hear him crying out, sister, but for you I will go. You know, I was really, really shocked. Never before and never after something like that happened to me. I knew Jesus was at work. He was there. He really, you know, he showed me how the prayer of praise and thanksgiving, how he is working. When we really, truly surrender everything, ourselves to him. We can conclude this reflection that our trust in the Lord is most fully expressed in accepting the will of God with praise and thanksgiving. Many saints give us outstanding examples of their relationship with God when they embraced with gratefulness the way God guided them, even when it was filled with challenges and suffering, they were always assured of his love. And our two great apostles of divine mercy, Saint Faustina and Saint John Paul II, she wrote, Welcome to you, New Year in the course of which my perfection will be accomplished. Thank you in advance, O Lord, for everything your goodness will send me. Thank you for the cup of suffering from which I shall daily drink. Do not diminish its bitterness, O Lord, but strengthen my lips that while drinking of this bitterness, 
they may know how to smile for love of you, my master. I thank you for your countless comforts and graces that flow down upon me each day like the morning dew, silently, imperceptibly, which no curious eye may notice and which are known only to you and me, O Lord. For all this, I thank you as of today, because at the moment when you hand me the cup, my heart may not be capable of giving thanks. So, it's very important to, to recall and even to write down the graces we, we receive, to remember them. And the testimony of John Paul II recorded um, a video testimony, which he gave in May 1994. He said, through Mary, I would like to express my gratitude for this gift of suffering. I would like to give thanks for this gift. I understand that it is a necessary gift, that the Pope had to be in the Gemelli Hospital. He had to be absent from this window for four weeks. He had to suffer. In the same way he suffered 13 years ago, he had to suffer again this year. I have meditated, I have reflected over all of these during my hospital stay. And I have understood that I should lead the Church of Christ to the third millennium with prayers, with various initiatives, but I have seen that this is not enough. I need to lead it with suffering. These two examples show us that when we accept whatever God gives us as coming from our loving Father, we start to look at everything no longer from a human perspective, but from the God's perspective. we will see that on the way of our lives, he transforms us and makes us more and more at his image and his likeness. And I would like to, to finish this reflection with the words of Father Felix Folayevsky a late apostle of divine mercy, a Palatine father who suffered a lot and who, who said, Jesus, I trust in you, mean I thank you, Lord, for everything you give me. <laughs>